What happens with the reason you didn't make amends five years ago was there was a story. And the story was if I go make amends, they're going to know I'm high, they're going to know I'm using, they're going to know I'm not sincere, they don't really like me. They'll probably come after me. It's their fault anyway. Blah, 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 until I got to a place called, I've just justified myself back into the same position of not doing it. Right? Um, so, do you guys follow the thought pattern? So, that pattern you've just proven is false. Right? The only difference in what took place was. Um, Time, right, was different, uh, and because of some of the, the position you were in, it was a little, it, you were able to approach it differently. Yeah. But you got yourself into a different position to approach it by the way you thought about the situation, because yeah. you just as easily today as you did five years ago could have convinced yourself, maybe with a different argument, yeah. but with the same process that it wasn't a good idea, right? Could have been, well, you know, I'm clean now, but all they're going to do is hold everything against me. You know, and then I'm going to get over there, and they're probably going to say something about me, and they're not going to get my religion. Now they're going to think I'm all religious. They're going to say this about me. And at the end of the day, it's going to turn out to be an argument, and so it's probably not even a good time to do it. I'll just move on down the line. Right? And I've still sold myself with the same sick thinking cycle that I used to use when I was active in my active addiction. It's just, um, I'm going to use the word less crazy because there's not all the chemicals involved, so it's less irrational than it was when I was, you know, high. When I'm high, it's you know, if you think about some of the stuff we thought was like completely rational, you know, cops are going to show up, helicopters are flying around, but we tell ourselves all kinds of crazy stuff. So, you know, it's it's less crazy than that, but the process is still the same. And what it does is it keeps us from moving into that next position because the story we've told ourselves is, I know better than God. That's really what we're saying. Is, I, I know better. You know, instead of saying. Now, today, what you do is you say, here's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Um, I'm going to trust God that this is what it's supposed to do based on what I've seen in other people's lives. Right? I know that Jake did it. It went good for Jake. So I have some type of faith that if I do these same things, something similar can happen to me. Right? And if it doesn't go well, I know I did the right thing. But all that is I know I do not have two minds. is another story. Right? You guys follow me? Mm -hmm. So, either way, I'm telling myself stories when I'm talking to myself. I'm always constantly telling myself stories. That's really what we're doing is, is convincing ourselves of one thing or the other. Again, going back to what I talked about this weekend, right? I could have worked myself into a frenzy talking about, like, I don't know these people, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to have fun. They'll probably want to drink. All they're going to do, blah, blah, blah. You know, she's a weirdo. She's the daughter of, the, you know, this and, you know, and get myself where I'm like totally shut off and I don't get to experience what I should experience in the situation. Or I can do what I did, which was kind of talk about what we did last week and then get myself into a position where I can make the choice to say I'm going to choose to see the optimistic side of this and say, you know, I know when I put myself out there and do things that I'm uncomfortable with in my recovery that are positive, that God does, shows up, you know, and I learn something or even if I don't quote learn something, I experience something positive, right, that I haven't gotten to experience maybe in years or uh, ever. You know, early in recovery, it's like go to meetings, right? How many of you guys, when you first started going to meetings, went to meetings for, had, how many of you guys here has ever convinced yourself that going to a meeting was a bad idea? Sure. Oh, okay, just make sure we're all on the same page. And we, we had a great argument, right? I mean, most of us are pretty, we, we, could, we could have been great attorneys and we'd done better in school, right? We could, because we can build very strong cases on very little information. <laughs> you know, this is how we're built. And so the, the, the negative side is if I choose to build negative cases, then I'm going to do that and it's always going to stop me from getting to the person, place, or thing that God has for me in my future, right? And then... I'm not going to be able to hear them accurately. I think somebody, you said that earlier, like you won't be able, you won't be able to hear your dad yeah. years back. Well, you weren't able to hear him accurately because at that point in time in our lives, what was the story? I know better. Yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. I got this under control, right? So that was our story. And the reason we couldn't hear is because that was our story. Mm -hmm. And the undercurrent to a lot of those negative stories is still, I know better. I got it under control. I'll figure it out, right? There's no submission in that. It's a, it's a little more devious 
once we get clean because it's not so obvious, you know, because we're not talking about, at times, we're not talking about just, hey, go use, right? It could be, um, hey, I need to go talk to somebody at work about some stuff that's going on, right? Well, I'm, and if I go talk to them, yeah. then they're going to know my idea, and then they're going to yeah. steal my idea, and then they're going to tell the people that I'm stupid, and then they're going to use this yeah. against me, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then we worked ourselves in a position where we never go have the conversation or never throw out the idea that we have or never the solution we might have for something because we've convinced ourselves that something bad's going to happen. So you, you see it? Stop. It stops us. It's a stopper. So... Um, my question is like, how do we stay aware of that, and how do we work on that, and how do we retrain ourselves to? Because you know, the other, the extreme other version is, and some of us can get stuck in this. You know, it's it, it's not as obvious as it used to be, but it's like we're a perpetual no, stuck machine. True. And what I mean is, that's the reason true. a lot of people in recovery, I don't um, they get clean, but they never get like happy, the and they never get successful is is they get to a certain level of like, uh, you know, I, I get this, but they, the language is, it's a lot of can't, never, always, there's all these absolute verbiage that comes into place, and all that's geared towards stopping me, right? It's not open language, it's constrictive language, like we were talking about last week. So how do we, how do we combat that? How do we stay aware, aware of that? How do we um, change that? Because we've got a lot of years of practice of doing that. Think of, you know, take a second and think of your own. Well, here's a, here's a good one. To get us going. How, so t- take a second. How many people can think of an area no, of their life they, right now? No, well, whether it's that finances, relationships, or whatever, you feel stuck. I think we asked this question a few weeks back. There's something where you feel stuck. Or you don't see a way out. Or you think you've gotten as far as you can. Anybody have any of those? Yeah. We say maybe debt. Okay, debt for you. What was yours? My mine's in. It's like a. It's a specific case. Okay. Where I'm like this is gonna end horribly. I know it. You know, and I've prognosticated that. Okay. So. Okay. So you got a specific case that you're working on. So do you think that it, it impairs your ability to see solutions for that case? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And so do you think the, your mindset towards the debt impairs your ability to see solutions for your debt? Hey. For solving your debt? Oh, a little bit. Okay. Anybody else got any? Everybody else feels totally free? Nothing's stopping them from doing anything, conquering the world? <laughs> If I were to say, hey, you know, you're going to have a job making $200,000 a year at some point in time, a family of four, a big house, a couple <laughs> cars, leading recovery groups, donate money, you, you see nothing in the way of that. Yeah, I guess, I guess you were there with it. I got a lot of, yeah, uh, there's plenty. Of <laughs> like, my, like, I got like a warrant in Pennsylvania that's had for like six years that I've actually got to take care of, and that's been aggravating me because like I've never even had a driver's license. I'm twenty five years old and never had a driver's license. Okay. It got suspended when I was like fourteen till I was eighteen and like right after I turned eighteen I got arrested and got that warrant. So I've never had it. So that and then my academic background is like you know, sometimes it gets a little overwhelming. Like I mean I feel confident that I mean I'm just one piece at a time. Like you said, like you know, like the base camp thing, like that's the way I'm looking at it. Like just one step at a time, not get overwhelmed and like down. But sometimes when I'm when I look at the big picture, I mean, you know, not so much recently, but before I'd be like, dude, this is this is so much I got to do. And again, debt that goes along with the legal side of it, leaned against my license. Mm-hmm. So it's like I got thousands I got to pay. I go to Pennsylvania, turn myself in. I got to go do this, and like all for that start of that. 
You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. Sometimes that's a little overwhelming, but I have uh, faith that it's going to work out. I, just, I know it's going to take time. I just, you know, but that gets, that's one of them for sure. Okay. We've got a lot to do. Good deal. Anybody else? <laughs> and the reason I think it's important is that there's parts, there's times in our recovery where things kind of come relatively easy, um, or we see them being able to come relatively easy, and there's times where we feel like can't get anything done. You know, like It's like, you know, I, I remember early on, like, with my, some of my debt, it was like, I, I'm throwing nickels into a 50-gallon barrel drum, you know, one at a time. You know, it's going to take me until I'm 100 <laughs> to pay something off. Um, and so that, you know, there was a tendency to go, what does it matter, you know, at this point in time? Or I'll keep trying, but, you know, I don't have any real faith that this is going to turn out okay. Or, I, you know, I, uh, I don't have a college degree or I didn't finish school. And how are, you know, how am I ever going to get to a place called I can make enough money to support this? Um, you know, so there's all those question marks that come in um, that limit us, or you know, in my situation, limit me and have limited me before uh, because I've chosen to not acknowledge that I'm thinking in that way. So it's a, I guess so it's, everybody's got something I'm sure they can think of. So how do you going back to the, the question? How do we? How do we? Or how do you? teach yourself to look at things differently. And I understand one of the, answer, one of the answers is probably going to be like, we just got to have faith, you know, and, and believe and work hard. And But I'm, I'm asking you guys to stay away from those kind of umbrella statements, you know, I, I, that are easy to kind of hide underneath. Is like specifically, what are some things that we can do uh, that are very practical, you know, and, and re- Developing our skill set in these areas. Yeah. Organization. Okay. Organizing your life, like when it comes to, it could be down to, you know, for me managing, you know, what income I have coming in and where it's going, and just, you know, basically having documentation of things and being in order in that aspect, which will allow me to kind of consistently keep the mindset moving that it's, you know, going in that direction, at least. Okay. So what is, and that's good, so from between where you just spoke of and where we were talking about before, so there's a different in positions here, right? So what you're talking about doing is, is we'll call it position A. Position A for that to, for you to even want to do that, you have to believe there's something in it for you, right? You have to believe like if I do, if I get organized, it's going to help get me in a good place, right? So how do you get yourself in a position to believe that? Because the reason you didn't do it before was you were in a position where you didn't believe it would help, right? I mean, for me, it would be. Easy generally seeing progress would allow me to get uplifted, right. but like you're asking more in depth on like how do I change my perception. What if there is no progress that you can see? Because sometimes progress is not yeah, that easy to find, wrong. right? I mean, sometimes wrong. it's real easy. And, I, and early on, I think in recovery, I think it's, it's, it's easier because we're coming out of so much junk that there's these huge chunks of things falling off and it's like, oh man, you know. Oh man, not that the work's not hard, but I think it's easier to identify because we're coming out of such a dark place, you know, that every little bit of light is like, oh, you know, we're going to make progress. And then you get to a certain point where that stuff's kind of gone away, you know, and now you're, it's harder to see those areas. It's, they're still happening, but they're not as obvious because the contrast is not as great. Make sense? So... You know, when you, and that's what kind of feeling stuck is, right? Like, I don't see, I don't see the progress. I feel stuck, even though we know that in life you're, you're always moving, either one way or backwards or forwards, you know, but you don't see it. So how do I get myself into a position where I believe, because we, all, we talked about this before, like, right, my belief systems creates my emotional status, my emotions create my 
actions and behaviors, right? And my behaviors create my habits, habits create wherever I'm going to end up. So how do I get myself into a different, quote, belief system? Because the, the first time we did it, we'll go back to the beginning of recovery, the first time we got into that belief system was because we had no other option. So that's one option we talked about, right? I can wait until there's no other option and that, that I'm laying in the shower floor, you know, crying and going, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, help me. And we'll all have those days. But how, the other option that we can work on is how do we identify so we have less of those days because we're perpetually evaluating and looking at how do we get back into a belief system that says, if I get organized, I can start chiseling away at this. Look, I, I look at look at the truth in your own life story of what God's done for you, like what it's brought you out of. Like for me, like I, I mean, I remember other cases where I'm like, this is gonna just crash and burn, and just being angst ridden for months and months and years at a time, and then it worked out. Yep. Like debt, you know, like I'm sorry, the crosstalk, but like you know, what what bondage has God already brought you out of? It's like, oh, you think about that compared to, like, some debt collectors. Yeah. You know, so for me, I look at my own, the truth of what God's already done for me. And okay. so I can be like, I don't know how this is going to work out. I'm going to do, you know, God, I know it's going to work out yeah. one way or the other. God's got it. I'm going to do all that I can, but I know it's going to work out. Okay. So what are you doing right there? What am I doing? Yeah. I'm acknowledging, I mean... My role in it. Give yeah. So he's, what he's doing is using what's happened yeah, to tell that. himself a new story, okay. right? And he's using the facts of what's happened in his own life to project, right? It's like when you're in, if you're doing if you're doing work at the office, like if I'm doing something, I look at what's taking place to project what's going to take place, right? Now, I can not do that. I can just say. I'm not yeah, going to look at the data, that. and I'm like, man, it's not, I don't think it's going to be good. Or I can say, I think it's going to be good. And the reality is, now I'm just being foolish because I don't know either way because I'm not evaluating anything that's actually happened. And I can look at the past and say, I can only look at the bad things that happened and, uh, and say, well, only bad things are going to happen, right? Which is typically what happens with the negative perspective. We take and take segmented negative facts from the past and, cr and project those forward to a negative outcome in the future, right? Because they're, they're like sound bites out of our life of this, and we're not really taking all the facts into consideration. Or we can look at our life and say, here's the story of what's taken place, the, the whole thing, good and bad, and I can understand because I can also take only the good, right? Here's, here's the other problem we run into with some people in our country, <coughs> is they take only the good stuff. And then they project that forward, and their picture in the future has no difficulties, no problems, no obstacles, no issues, or anything like that. And then, so they've got an unrealistic and expectation so of the future, right? So I then when they come it. into those things, because there is no existence without obstacles, issues, problems, and stuff, then it bumps us back, and we don't know what to do, because we're like, all this, yeah. we've got all these uh, unrealistic expectations, right? So then we're pissed off, resentful, responding poorly, all that kind of stuff, right? So we have to take a holistic look at what's taking place with us and take a holistic viewpoint okay, of what's ahead of us from a positive perspective, right? Of saying, and again, any of us that look realistically at our past have no conclusion to come to, but there, you know, somebody up there likes us enough that we didn't die. There's a greater plan for us according to God's scripture and recovery, right? And so, you guys follow me? So, yeah. so then the best way for me to get into that place so if I, I have to, I can only speak for myself so it might be different for you okay is sometimes when I'm really rattled it's hard for me to reflect on my story and come up with a positive outlook because I've got all this other stuff jumbled in my head you know around what's going on now so I've got to kind of filter all that out and look at it and sift through it it's harder. I can do it, but it's harder. For some reason, when I put myself in a position to share my testimony with people, and those of you who have shared, you just got done doing it, right? When you when you sat here and shared your testimony, how did you feel when you got done? Good. Good. 
Good. Yeah, yeah peaceful, good, Peace. optimistic, yeah. centered, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's something about doing that. Um, and it doesn't mean we have to share our whole story, you know what I'm saying? But it's um, opening ourselves up to be able to do that in some capacity helps that process. And, and so one of the things that I've, I've realized, and one of the reasons I come over here, one of the reasons you know, I do is that the more I can share about my story and what I've gone through and where I'm at and things like that with people and share those things with people, which is one, I'm instructed to do that, so I'm being obedient in doing that. But it reminds me, just like you're talking about, of what I've come through. Because I'll forget, you know. I always joke that, you know, Israelites forgot, we forget. And we're just like, it's just a, you know, it's a picture of us, right? So we forget that, hey, all these good things have happened. But when I'm telling you about it, it forces me to think about it differently because I've got to think about how I'm going to tell you the story. And, and I typically am going to have a hard time saying, Mark, let me tell you about my recovery and go into how awful it was. Right or how how only the negative things have happened. I'm just not going to go there. I've never found myself, no matter how negative I am at that point in time, and how bad of a place I'm in. <coughs> when I stop and and authentically share my testimony, it put, it forces me into that position. And so that's an for me that's the easiest um, and most simplistic approach, and it, and that I can be conscious of on a daily basis is who, you know who do I need to share some of my testimony with today. I don't even know what part it is. But if I'm looking and listening for people to relate to in that capacity, to in, in recovery, what do we do? It's, it's experience, strength, and hope, right? So I'm listening to something to, to share with you, and you share with me so that we're not alone. You're not uniquely broken in what you're struggling with, right? Why? Because I've struggled with something kind of similar. Let me tell you what I've struggled with and what, what's happened in my life. So all that's doing is reminding me to get in that other place. So then when I sit down, I do need to deal with finances or whatever it is I'm in a different place and if I'm not in that different place then those are one of the things I can do make sense mm -hmm. so why don't we do that more often Sorry, through to you know what we're gonna hear. Good. All right, me. What I tend to do. I know. Yeah. I know the fruit of positioning myself in front of someone speaking authentically, but I still go to the before even doing it. I know. I think I know. What I'm still playing the story. The same process. I okay. Know what, I know what I'm gonna hear in response. So what's the point of doing it? Okay. So what stopped you there is the same thing we talked about at the very beginning, right? Yeah. I think I know. Mm -hmm. And is that here? Oh. Um, I was like, lock the door. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, maybe the trick, and again, I'm not, this is something I have to constantly work on too, so it's not like I'm sitting here and I got all the answers on this. It's just... Um, you know, it's, I have to be conscious of it because I can find myself spinning off and coming to negative places if I'm not careful. Um, how do we get around and how, if you think about this,